Hi guys, I'm Cody and welcome back to my channel. So today I'm bringing you a kind of late match wrap up. So as per usual, I read a lot of books so I'll try and keep this pretty short but you might want to grab yourself a snack because I read 21 books. Well, 21 things. There are some shorter bu books in there and some graphic novels too. So I'll just crack on and get started with the first one, shall I? So going in order that I read them so I can keep track because 21's a lot. <laughs> the first one I read was Eleanor Oliver is Completely Fine by Gail Honeyman and you've probably heard, about me, heard me talk about this before. I absolutely loved this book. This book's about Eleanor who lives in Scotland. She lives in Glasgow and she's very lonely. She doesn't have any friends and this story is about her becoming friends with someone from her office and how her life changes because of that. It is very heartwarming, beautiful, written. Eleanor's not a very likeable character at the beginning but you do become you know empathise with her as we go through the novel and this is just a cracker. If you've probably seen this around I really really recommend. I gave it a 5 out of 5 stars but the thing that really sold me on this book is the fact that there's kind of like a thriller kind of theme in between this as well. There is also um, the fact that Eleanor has burn scars on her face and she's repressed some horrible memories from her childhood. So we get to find out uh, all about that eventually as she starts to kind of remember things from her childhood and that gives us even more of in depth into her character. And we do have a little bit of a twist as well in the end, which just was just the cherry on top of a great book. So five stars, I recommend. My next picks were a fantasy series that I have been kicking myself that I hadn't already read, so I just had to, and that is the Shadow and Bone series, the Grisha trilogy by Lee Bardugo. I have read Six and Crows and Quaker Kingdom before I read these, so this was lovely. It gave me more of an insight into the world and the magic system, and I know that people say that this is um, a little bit you know, not as good really as um, Six of Crows and Crooked Kingdom, but I thoroughly enjoyed it anyway. So we have Shadow and Bone, Siege and Storm, and Ruin and Rising. And I think I gave them like all a four star. The only thing is, um, is I love the Darkling. I don't really like Mal. But that didn't impede on my enjoyment of the series, it really didn't. Um, and yeah, I just, after reading Six of Crows and Cookie Kingdom, I just ate this up. I wanted to know more about the Grisha world, and I'm excited for her to bring more out in the Grisha world. If you haven't read these, and you're a little bit unsure because you've heard it's not as good, I'd say just do it. I mean, it's an easy read, it's beautifully written, I mean, it's Lee Bardugo, and the character's cool, there's some friendships in here, it's all good. If you want an easy fantasy series, Give them a go. They are, they are hyped and famous for a reason. <laughs> then from my library, which I've since returned, I read An Ember in the Ashes by Sabah, Sabah Tahir. And I really enjoyed this one too. This is a story, it's kind of set in the desert, there's a corrupt government. What I will say about this story is that it was really good, but it was highly forgettable. <laughs> and I think that's because it was just so similar to a lot of um, kind of fantasy series that I've read. It reminded me a lot of Red Rising, a little bit of Hunger Games in there. A little bit of Brandon Sanderson almost. It was enjoyable but it wasn't anything groundbreaking. So from what I can remember, and as I said it's quite forgettable, this is a story about a young girl whose um, family is be has been killed because they are known as traitors to this kind of government that is corrupt and we have a young guy who is training to become, I guess, part of the government as well. Again, kind of forgettable. However, um, she has to infiltrate this school as like a maid and it's all about this guy kind of being like, I don't know if I want to go out and kill people. It was all right. There was trials, which I always enjoy trials in a book. I gave it a four star, but would I continue in the series? Maybe? I don't know. It's one of those, you know? I then read a book that has a lot of hype on booktube and the reviews are good and bad, it's a little bit polarising, and that's The Hazelwood by Melissa Albert. Now I do have to tell you that the first half of this book I absolutely loved. We have an unlikable character, she has a single mother and they're travelling and they're escaping their past. Um, so this story is about a writer who's the grandmother of our protagonist who wrote a series of children's stories called The Hazelwood and they were very, very popular but now they are kind of shrouded in mystery, there's not many copies left. The author went into kind of reclusion and she bought an estate called The Hazelwood and she's lived there and she's never been seen. Um, the young girl and her mum never really speak, speak about the grandma, it's kind of off limits, her mum clearly has a grudge. And then her mum gets taken to the Hazelwood and a note's left for the girl being like, don't come to the Hazelwood. So of course she has to go to the Hazelwood, right? The first half of this book was completely intriguing. I was giving me night film vibes because this author was so mysterious and I was like, yes, I want to know everything. 
The second half is where this amps up and we finally do get to see these other worlds that have been created. However, it almost felt like Melissa Albert had so many ideas and she just tried to throw so much at us that nothing really stuck and I lost interest. So this I gave a three stars to. It was just meh. It was all right, could have been better, meh. I then moved on to a book that I really enjoyed and that's The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo by Taylor Jenkins Reid. This is my first Taylor Jenkins Reid um, book that I've ever read. And you've probably heard me talk about this previously if you're not new here, um, but I really enjoyed this. Contemporary is not usually my thing, I'm more of a fantasy sci-fi kind of girl. However, this story was just so beautiful and the representation in here was so great it left me guessing. However, there were a couple of reveals that I found a little bit predictable, so I gave it a four stars as opposed to what a lot of people have been doing which has been giving it a five. However, it's beautifully written and I really enjoyed it. So if you didn't know, this is a story about Evelyn Hugo, who had seven husbands in her career. She was the Elizabeth Taylor of her age and she um, finds someone out of obscurity to come and basically let her write a book about her going through all the lives, um, all the lives, all the husbands that she had. Each chapter is dedicated to a different husband and why she married him. Was it for her career? Was it for love? Was it for friendship? And, oh, it's just really good, you guys. It was heartwarming. But the thing about this is Evelyn Hugo admits that she's not very likable. She doesn't have any regrets. She wouldn't do anything differently, even though she knows that she messed up, made mistakes. And that was incredibly endearing um, to read from. So highly recommend this one. I then was in the mood for a little bit of dystopian, so I went for Scythe by Neil Shusterman, as I've heard this has got really good reviews, and I enjoyed it as well. It's not the best dystopian I've ever read, um, but it was enjoyable, and I think I gave it a four, if not close to a four, and I am intrigued to read the sequel. It left off quite nicely, and I kind of want to see where it goes, but I'm in no rush, because I didn't absolutely adore this book, but I liked it well enough, you know? So this story is really interesting because it's set in a world where we have no longer have uh, natural deaths, there's no poverty, there's, if you die basically they bring you back, the only way that you can truly die is if a scythe comes for you and you're not allowed to be revived, or by fire, so that's, they can't bring you back if you burn to ashes basically, which makes sense. Um, in this world we have a AI I guess who's running the show because they know better called Thunderhead and the only thing that the AI isn't in control of is the scythedom and this is kind of a community, not a community but like kind of like a government sector of people who um, can kill you and they choose them at their own wish I guess, like they have reason, they all have different reasons as to why they choose their victims which was incredibly intriguing. So this is told from two perspectives, we have a young guy and a young girl who are both chosen by a scythe to be an apprentice to them, which is unusual, they only usually choose one apprentice, however this guy's chosen both of them. They have to compete and at the end of the year one of them will be get to become a scythe, which means that their family will get immunity and they will never be killed by scythes, so they'll basically live for us forever basically. So yeah, super intriguing, it was fast paced, it was well written, I did find it to be a little bit of a lull in the middle, but then shit got crazy about halfway through and I was invested. So. Yeah, I gave it, as I said, a four, close to a four. If you want some new sci-fi and a kind of cool world to sink your teeth into, I would recommend this. I then read another book that is really, really hyped just now. Everyone seems to be loving this. Everyone and their nan has given this five stars. So of course, the hype got me. And that's Children of Blood and Bone by Tomi Adeyemi. So this is a West African inspired fantasy story, which did remind me a little bit of Elantris, as it's about a purge on magic and a way to bring it back. We're following two sets of siblings, a prince and a princess, and a young girl and her, young, and her brother, her elder brother. Um, the thing is though, the young girl who's not a princess sees yeah, it's kind of ostracized because um, there was a race of people who had magic but the um, king or the emperor, I can't quite remember, um, just basically purged them all and magic was gone and anyone who uh, was younger than 13 um, who had the mark of magic, which is white hair in this case, um, was saved because they knew that they just couldn't do magic anymore, it was gone. So Zeely has white hair and she has been ostracized and she's gets a lot of prejudice from other people in her in her kind of town because she could have magic and yeah there's like slaves and things it's all very interesting and I really really did enjoy this however it's not the best fantasy in the world guys like I just have to say it like yeah it's good it's binge worthy it's a big book but you fly through it because it's YA the language is you know short and easy it's easy to read it is very fast paced as I mentioned but I gave it a four, I didn't give it a five because I've read better fantasies out there, but this has the potential 
to be a winning series because it's an introduction to this world. It was a good introduction, like I said, I gave it a four. But the ending of this has been like, oh damn, stuff's about to get real in the sequel. So yeah, I'm excited for the sequel. The sequel could possibly be a five star as things are gonna get, gonna get I imagine, to be a little bit more political and a little bit more, like the, the stakes are probably gonna be a lot higher in the second book. I think we're gonna get more action. So super intrigued um, to about the sequel, but yeah, I gave it a four star. I would recommend it. It's, it's a good one if you just want a quick, easy fantasy that's a bit different because it's tribal magic and there's great representation, obviously. So yeah, those are my thoughts. Controversial, but not a five star, unfortunately. <laughs> but this book was a five star. I love this book. I will reread it, but I'll probably take a couple of years before I'd go and reread it because spoilers, I already know that kind of thing. But let me just tell you what it is. And that's The Seven Deaths of Evelyn Hardcastle by Stuart Turton. This was the best book I read this month, honestly, guys. Read this book. It is so weird, <laughs> but in the best way. So I have shown on my channel before, but this has a lovely naked spine. But it's the map. It's the map that got me. It, this is basically Cluedo. It's great. So this story is basically Agatha Christie meets Quantum Leap. It's great, it's kind of historical fiction because it's set in a time when there's like this grand estate with this grand ball and um, Evelyn's gonna die. <laughs> and it's, yeah, as I said, it's time hopping, it's body swapping and it's super confusing, but it's so well done that you are just gripped. I read this so, so quickly. So this is a story about a guy who has to take on a different body each day to figure out who's gonna kill Evelyn and he gets to retain the memories of the people that he, inhabits so um, he'll basically be in the body of eight different people throughout this story and throughout this party who are well known to have information on who's going to kill Evelyn so he has to race against time to figure out who's going to kill her and then once he has the answer he can be released and he can have his old memories back and he can be who he truly is because as he's going through these people he's also retaining their personalities so by the end of this it's a bit of a basket case because he's got all these different kind of subconsciousness is in his brain and oh it's just so good you guys this had me on tender hooks I was just so enthralled by this story. It's nothing like I've ever read before. It was a first novel as well, which was just amazing. And I can't recommend this enough. If you like a thriller, but you want something a bit different, truly, truly give it a chance. I can imagine some people might not like the ending, but I really did. I thought it rounded out nicely, but it's just worth it for the experience, guys. This is so confusing, but in the best way. And if you're anything like me and you like being a little bit mind fucked, you're gonna love it, so yeah. Five out of five stars to The Seven Deaths of Evelyn Hardcastle. If you can get your hands on it, do. It's really good. Another book that I gave five stars to because it was incredibly enjoyable and it was a continuation of a series is God's Grave by Jay Kristoff. I bloody loved this book. I can't tell you too much about it because spoilers for Nevernight. However, I only gave Nevernight a four stars, but shit just gets so, so crazy in this book. And Mia's progression as a character is amazing. Obviously, we have Mr. Kindly, the shadow cat, who's always gonna be one of my favorite characters ever. And we have obviously the narration in here, which is really dark humored and sarcastic, which is totally up my alley. This was so fast paced. We have some new relationships and friendships in here and a lot of characters he just kills off which I mean, you can love or loathe, but I in particular love this. And oh, I just love this book so much. Um, as I said, I can't tell you too much, but the ending of this book, hot damn, I did not see that coming. I cannot wait for the next one. And I think Mia Corvere is becoming one of my favorite characters. I just love her so much. She is a badass and just, I just love this so, so much, guys. If you haven't read Nevernight, and you really want to get into the series, just do it, please. Just please just do it. And then just come back and tell me how much you loved it because that makes me happy. I just, just love this. Oh, but I will mention, lots of sex. <laughs> you might go into this thinking it's a bit tame, YA. Nope, nope, so much sex. I was reading this on the bus. People were behind me and I, I, I just couldn't because I was, I was like too anxious <laughs> and a bit cringy. I was like, oh God, if they're reading this over my shoulder. But yeah, just love this. And then a little bit more from Jay Kristoff and Amy Kaufman, Obsidio, which was the last book in the Illuminae Files. I am really sad that this is over, but I am excited to see what else that these guys come up with in the sci-fi world. I know Jay Kristoff has got a new sci-fi series coming out and I'm hyped for it. But this was so good. Again, I can't tell you much because it's the finale in the series, but I was a little bit off with Gemina because I was like, oh, I didn't really like Gemina as much as Illuminae. But all the characters, 
uh, together in this beautiful, beautiful kind of ending. And it was great. Just great. Just, just everything. Um, it's also completely action-packed. The ending left me a little bit underwhelmed, so I gave it a 4 as opposed to a 5. I was like, oh, I wanted a bit more of a badass ending than that. But it was still great. Still an absolute great time. And yeah, another series that I highly recommend is The Illuminae Files, because it's just sci-fi, but sci-fi done in such a cool way with all these mixed media. I loved it. I loved it. <laughs> I then went on to read some graphic novels and I was hyped for this and that was Monstrous Volume 2 by Madri Lu and Sana Takeda. I absolutely adore this series. If you saw my review of the first volume you'll know I love this. I can't really tell you much because it's a continuation again but if the artwork alone doesn't get you excited for this then I don't know what else will. This is an incredibly, incredibly confusing series though because there's a lot of um, players in this, we have a lot of history, we have a lot of different magic systems and we have a main protagonist, a young girl who has a monster inside her and that kind of messes everything up for her. But this was so so good. Um, again though, a little bit underwhelmed with the ending but I think the third volume is where it's going to get super good so I only gave this a four but I mean I'm, I'm always going to want to read these so the next one I'm just so excited for. <laughs> I then read a hyped graphic novel that I felt was a little bit maybe overhyped. I didn't enjoy this as much as I thought I would and that's Paper Girls volume one and um, this one is by Von Chang and Wilson Fletcher and the artwork yes I absolutely love. It's pastel, it's 80s, it's kind of like Stranger Things but this was so confusing, so we hardly get any kind of in-depth into the characters at the start of this. We're following a young girl who just becomes friends with these girls really real quick. And it's called Paper Girls because they are literally, you know, delivering newspapers. And then everything starts to change and it gets real sci-fi, which I love, but I just didn't feel invested in these characters. And the sci-fi was a little bit like, wait, what's happening? So I don't know, let me know if it's worth continuing in these. Um, but I only gave this a... 3, 3.5? I mean the artwork kind of pushed up that 5 points but I mean I don't know, I don't know. Am I the only one who felt that this was a little bit meh compared to other graphic novel series? Um, let me know if it's worth continuing guys, that would be helpful. <laughs> and then continued in the Mistborn sagas I guess. So you have the original Mistborn trilogy which is just here on my shelves and then this is the second generation. I was a bit of an idiot though because I thought it was just these three but there's a fourth book coming out so I mean yes. Um, so I read Alloy of Law, Shadows of Self and Brands of Morning. This takes place like oh hundreds of years after those ones take place. So it was lovely to see that they kind of named places and landmarks after the characters and it was lovely to see how religion has changed since then. But these books are kind of like a western. Westerns and I just I, I cannot deal with westerns. I just they're just not my cup of tea at all. However westerns with magic? I'm all for that. So you have all these alamancers but then when you bring like to the game bullets things can change and he's done it so so well and I loved the characters in this. We have Wax and we have Wayne. Wayne is one of my favourite characters ever now. He's obsessed with hats and it's just hilarious and if you haven't read this you won't get it but I love Wayne. And yeah, I'm fully, fully enjoying myself. I think I gave this one a four, a four stars. It was a little bit slow starting but then in Shadows of Self we get so much more information about the history of what's happened and characters that we know very well from the first series start to play a part and I was like yeah eating it up oh my god I was so excited I was like oh my god oh my god like yes yes um so I gave this one a five star but then I thought this one was the finale didn't I <laughs> it wasn't there's another one coming out so I gave this a four because I just wanted I was like really impatient and I just wanted everything to be solved and all the mysteries to be known and of course that's not going to happen because you know fourth book. Um, but I can't tell you too much about these if you haven't read the original Miss Bond because it'll just be completely confusing to you yet. But if you love fantasy, give Brandon Sanderson a go, start with the Miss Bond trilogy, the first one, start with The Final Empire and then move on to these ones. It's a great time. I would say leave a gap like I did between reading those and reading these because they're very different. You're gonna love these just for the references from the original Miss Bond. I know you are and there's new characters which are great and yes, just lots of good female characters in this one as well. Like in the first series we only had Vin really who was badass. In this one we have so many more and my heart was just full and happy. 
loved this. I then read a graphic novel which I've since returned to the library which was Fahrenheit 451 which is originally by Ray Bradbury. This is the um, kind of finished graphic novel that was said like cool yeah do that. However I only gave it a three stars. The artwork was okay but I was completely confused. I think I need to read the novel because it, it was lost on me. It was lost on me. It was just too short. There wasn't any kind of in-depth into the characters. Our protagonist was cool and we got some stuff, but we didn't get enough. I feel like you need to have read Fahrenheit 451 to appreciate the graphic novel, which I haven't. <laughs> so I kind of get what Fahrenheit 451 is now, but I feel like the point was lost on me because I haven't read the actual book. So hopefully that will change soon. But if you have read it and you'd like to have a refresh of it, the graphic novel was all right, three stars. I then absolutely devoured Death Note. I, oh, I love Death Note. I do. And I get the hype now. And I only have volume one and you know I'm going to go out and get the other volumes because this was just so damn enjoyable. And the artwork, man, like, oh, so good. Look how creepy. So, so, so good. I watched the anime when I was a kid, so I kind of remember what was going to happen, but it didn't impede on me in my enjoyment at all. Truly love Death Note. I gave it a five stars. I mean, what else can you give Death Note? It has to be a five star. It's a classic and it is for a reason. So yeah, truly loved it. My first time ever reading a manga though, and that was confusing for the first like 10 pages. <laughs> Got the hang of it, <laughs> thankfully. I then read a book that I've been wanting to read for a while because it was, it's gonna be, well, it's already out, it's a movie and a lot of people have been reading it and been telling me in my comments that I should definitely give it a go and that's A Wrinkle in Time by Madeleine Lengel. I, I really, really enjoyed this as well. It was a lot more religious than I was expecting though. Um, I guess that was just because of the time it was set. So this is about Meg and her brother, Charles, and their friend, I can't remember his bloody name, Calvin, <laughs> and their journey into a different world and we meet free witches and it was it was really really well done for the time this was like must have been ahead of its time for the science in here really really good but that science and religion kind of conflict was kind of interesting I and mean, a bit strange to be honest um i gave it a four star it was very short i don't know if i'll ever continue in the series because it didn't grip me enough but it was lovely to read and lovely to see why this is going to be a movie. I'm very interested to see the movie now and see how they've adapted it to future times. Will it be as religious? We shall see. But yeah, definitely worth a go. <laughs> and the last book I finished this month was a book that I've been working on for the last couple of months and it's just a book of poetry. And that's The Princess Saves Herself in this one by Amanda Lovelace. I've not, I'm not a poetry lover. I'm not. I can appreciate it, but I've never bought a poetry collection until this one. And I bought this because feminism, <laughs> you know, and I love the idea of this. And actually, going through this, there were some that I was like, meh, but there were some that I bloody loved and actually got a few tears out of me because I related so damn hard. So this is a story about a woman who, God, she must have had a hard life. Like, the things that she talks about in this, in these poems, I mean, she, it's grief, it's sex, it's heartbreak, it's uh, mental health, it's a bit of everything and some of these were truly heartbreaking but a lot of them were truly inspiring which I completely appreciate and I have definitely have some favourites in here. There's a few that I marked in here as my favourites and I'm going to read you one that's How's That for a Happily Ever After which is from The Queen section of, the, of this and it says once upon a time the princess rose from the ashes her dragon lovers made of her and crowned herself the motherfucking queen of herself. Just, I'm all for that. It reminds me very much of, you know, RuPaul. If you can't love yourself, how the hell are you gonna love somebody else? Can I get an amen up in here? Really enjoyed this, I gave it a four stars. So yeah, those are all the books I read in March, you guys. It was another great one for reading and I apologize that this came out late, but you know, life. <laughs> so I hope you enjoyed this video. Please let me know if you read any of these and your thoughts, if you have any recommendations from me, of course, hit me up. I'm always partial to those and I will be bringing out my April CBR real soon which has some hopeful winners on there and I am kind of cautiously optimistic that I can carry on this role of like 20-ish books per month but we shall see. So yeah I hope you enjoyed please like and subscribe if you care to and I will catch you in my next one. See you later, bye!